Good morning, bear. You found your little patch of sun. You like it there? You want to go outside? You like it there? Welcome back to another vlog. Um, excuse Barry. We are starting this video a little late today. It is 12.30. Well, we actually haven't eaten or done much this morning. Chris got a haircut. I was on the computer all morning working. So our day is kind of technically just getting started in terms of like... Although it's noon. The food content. I'm actually starving right now. I'm really hungry too. So we are going to figure out what we're going to eat. We are going home to LA. We had a family member pass away and so we are kind of I can't even talk right now okay take two uh, my cousin passed away a couple days ago so we have to <sighs> sorry this is like the first time I'm talking about this um we have to clear through our fridge and everything and like go through what we have now um, just to prepare for us leaving. I don't know how long we're gonna be there. I have no plan. Uh, we have no plan. We're all just kind of doing this on a whim because all, all this is very sudden. So we're gonna make some good food today. We're gonna show you what we are going to make with just random stuff we have in the house. And uh, hopefully you enjoy hanging out with us. So yeah, um, breakfast or lunch, it is 12.30. We're probably gonna not eat till like two o'clock at this point. It's gonna be lunch for sure. It's gonna be delicious, I think. <laughs> I kinda wanna make burgers. It's beautiful out and I'm gonna put the grill to use. You wanna do that? Yeah. Okay, do it. I'll make some, I wanted, wanted to make, or I have been testing a Filipino recipe. Some of you may have seen it on my Instagram, but I'm trying to make lumpia and um, it's been a process. I, lumpia Shanghai. Yeah, lumpia Shanghai. Shanghai. All right, I'm editing this video right now. I realized it did not explain what lumpia was, but it's basically like Filipino spring rolls. It's deep fried and you can make it with different fillings, but this one is meat. Well, vegan meat. It's been a process and I have been talking a lot with my mom and her sisters and I've been getting all of the tips and Balances. tricks from them. So hopefully this recipe will turn out great. Today we're gonna make, I don't even know how many times we've made this. Like This is like the third, third or fourth I round think, yeah. of it. So the fourth iteration of our lumpia that will hopefully be the final version for you. Yeah. The boys are chilling outside. What is that, an orange? Oh, it's a lemon. Oh. Bear is doing his thing, barking as usual, Louis. <laughs> this is standing. Just staring. Hi, Lou. <laughs> Go play, guys. I'm about to grill up some of these Impossible Burgers. Uh, they finally sell them locally, which is really cool. So I'm gonna be using a burger mold to shape these and I'll show you how they come out. off the grill sorry Barry is having a moment um, I gotta grab some lettuce from the garden so oh hi man I figure I'll give you a quick garden tour too hello Lewis also a little Louie update he's been good he's really coming out of his shell he still doesn't love me but outside he's better I'm not scary him and Barry are bros though. Right, Claire? Wanna give your brother a kiss? Okay. So, we've been getting a decent amount of rain here. So everything has been very vibrant. Um, we have some dill here that is grown a bunch. The cilantro that we had, it kind of grew a bunch and then I didn't maintain it properly, so it kind of got weird. We have some chives. 
some thyme, some oregano, parsley is looking really good. We have some lemongrass in this pot here. The lavender, I'm gonna move to the front because it's kind of taken over over here. Um, we have some sage here as well that's getting really big. And then we have some lettuce, which I need to pick. I'm actually gonna use some lettuce from down on the other end of the garden. This is an eggplant that is coming along nicely. And then we have this cauliflower that is starting to cauliflower, I guess you could say. <laughs> I don't know what the proper term would be, but we've found some of the squirrels getting in here and taking the leaves. But thankfully, that is still there and growing. And then we have tomatoes that are thriving. Nothing, we don't have any fruit yet, but they're pretty huge, so I so have to bend this in. Looking good here. So hopefully soon enough we'll have some tomatoes. Another tomato here. And then we have some peppers, which are starting to, I don't know if you can see it, they're starting to fruit. We've had some snappies. I actually just harvested a bunch of snap peas the other day. And then we have some spinach here that is regrowing. And then we have some bush beans that are kind of a mess, but they should be, um, ooh. Yeah, they're gonna start flowering and fruiting any day. And then over here, we have a ton of spinach. It's crazy how spinach grows. And then we have this lettuce, which I'm actually gonna pick. These are just like mixed greens um, that I'm gonna pick for our burgers. Perfect. And then we also have a blueberry bush that is almost ready to pick. You guys are just lounging out here, huh? You wanna smell the leaves? You want some? Your little partner in crime. Dude, he really smells. We need to wash his mouth. <laughs> Not even his body. I just need to like scrub his mouth with mouthwash. <laughs> Hi, stinky. Hi, stinky. Hi, stinky. The berry's only here for the burger. I know. Uh. <laughs> Love you, boys. You. Can I have a kiss? Can I have a kiss? Thank you. <laughs> no! <laughs> Yo! Okay. So I'm making, it's called Lumpia Shanghai, which is, it's like a meat lumpia. So usually it's either pork or beef or sometimes both, and then sometimes people add shrimp to it as well. So I'm going to be making a vegan version today, obviously. Wait, did you use all the impossible meat? Oh, we still have more? Okay. I tried this previously with Beyond Meat and the only thing about Beyond is it has a very beyond -y taste. It has like a very distinct flavor. So I wanted to make it a bit more, um, not palatable, but I, I, I wanna say like a bit more like on par with the real version. So I'm gonna be using Impossible Meat today. This is like, it's, we are not affiliated with them at all. I just want to say that because I realized both of these recipes that we're starting to video, video off with is impossible. Um, so usually it has meat in it. So I'm doing this in place of the beef and then in place of the shrimp, I'm actually going to be adding some nori flakes to it and or like a sheet of nori. And it's untraditional, but I want it to give it a little bit of a fishy flavor. And uh, that's, that's how I do it. It's not necessary but it's recommended if you can do it. And then for vegetables in it, everybody does it differently. Um, I was talking to my mom, my mom was consulting her sisters, and then I was also talking to one of my friends and she was asking her grandma how she does it because I wanted to just get 
Um, just get everybody's perspective and everybody's recipe to see what the best way to do it is. And everybody does it differently. So we are going to be using carrots. So I chopped up a carrot. Then I also have some garlic, fresh garlic, and some green onions. Some people use white onions. Some people use green and white onions, but I'm just gonna be using green today. My friend was telling me that her family adds celery, but I decided to not do that just because, I don't know, my family doesn't do that. And yeah, make one less ingredient, I guess. But if you wanna add celery, you could totally add celery. In terms of wrappers, um, you have to make sure you read the ingredients of these lumpia wrappers. So we got these at H Mart, which is like our local Asian market. We got two different kinds. I'm actually gonna be testing both today because the last two times that we made them, um, the first time we made them, we used this brand, which I cannot even remember the name of it. It was one of the, the wrappers at H Mart and it worked well. My mom actually used it a bunch when she was here, when she was visiting in December. So we went back and we bought some, but, or we were gonna buy some, but what was weird was there was a sticker that was put onto the ingredients on the wrapper and the sticker said it contained milk. And if you look under it, it didn't contain milk previously, so I don't know if it was like a misprint or it's an update or what, but regardless, I guess it's not vegan. So we found these two ones that don't have any um, eggs or milk or anything. These are both vegan. So just make sure you check the labels. These aren't gluten-free, but I'm actually gonna be testing a gluten-free one as well. So when this goes on the blog, you'll have all the information there. But um, I guess I'm gonna do a little demo right now. So in order to um, have everything blend well together in the lumpia, we like to put it in the food processor and really process down the carrots, the um, carrots, the garlic, and the green onion. So I'm just gonna pop everything in and just give it a rough chop. And I will have measurements on the blog for these ingredients, but honestly, every time we make it, just eyeball it. I kind of know how much I want in there. I dropped something. I kind of know how much I want in here, um, but if this is your first time making it, you can totally follow the ingredient measurements on the blog post. And I have definitely made this recipe by hand chopping everything, but I, I realized that when I do it in the food processor and I really break these down, it, the, um, not the dough, the filling for the lumpia really comes together and like, um, what's the word, binds together better. When I chop it, it's still a bit chunky, so I would recommend using a food processor if you're able to, and if not, just really, really finely chop everything. I'm gonna, actually, I have to read the text message. My cousin wants me to Photoshop something. They want me to Photoshop a photo of them for the services. Okay. Chris's parents went to this Black Lives Matter protest in their town. They live in a one square mile town. Um, it's a very white town. So it was really cool to see that they were doing something like this and his mom, I don't know if she's gonna kill me for showing you. Here, I won't show the picture of her. I'll just show the picture of her sign. But she painted this sign and it just, it just made me so happy to see. You see it? There you go. Anyways, what was I just saying? Oh, the lumpia. So let me grab one thing. So lumpia also has eggs in it, which we are not gonna be using because obviously we are vegan. So we are going to do two flax eggs. So two tablespoons flaxseed meal and then I'm gonna be using six tablespoons of water. All right, so I'm just gonna mix this together and let this thicken. You can also use chia seeds or you can use a vegan egg replacer if you have like a bagged one. I know there's neat egg, Bob Dreadmill has one. Those should all work. I have actually tested this without an egg replacer altogether, and I wouldn't recommend doing that because it really makes it crumbly. Like you really need to bind all these ingredients together and have them stay together in the wrapper or else it's gonna kind of fall apart. I'm gonna bend down so you can see me. I have the impossible meat in the bowl, and now I'm going to add in the vegetables. All right. Then to this, I'm adding in a tablespoon of soy sauce, which we have in our jar right here. A tablespoon of soy sauce. And a quarter teaspoon of salt. And black pepper, about a quarter teaspoon, I would say. So the only thing about this is you can't 
obviously taste this um, and adjust the seasoning. So what my mom does is, well, this is what I'm gonna do too. You can cook a little bit of it on just a pan and then taste it and just adjust the seasoning from there. This recipe is really simple. And another thing is, if you don't wanna fry, I do have an air fryer method as well that I tested um, and it works. It works pretty well in the air fryer actually. The only thing about the air fryer is I pre-cook the um, filling before I air fry it. And then, I've always chopped the nori by hand, but I realized I could put it in the food processor. I should have done this with the veggies because now I think it's gonna stick, but. Okay, so then, yeah. The nori's all shredded. Working with nori is a little annoying because it starts sticking to everything. This adds salt to it, so you may want to add just a touch more salt if you are skipping this. I need to go Photoshop a photo for my cousin right now, so I will be right back. All right, I almost forgot water chestnuts, so I'm opening a can now, and I'm just going to drain this. Typically, I would put it um, in the food processor with all the vegetables, but I forgot. And um, I process, I'm using the food processor three times in this, but if I were to make this again, I would just do everything at once. So I just wanted to throw that in there because I feel like I'm making it look more complicated than it actually is. Process this until it's like very fine. Cool. So now. All right, I'm gonna mix this all together. Then I'm going to add in my vegan egg, which is the flax meal. There you go, got nice and thick. All right, so, all right, this is the final mixture. And again, if you need to adjust the seasoning, um, what I would do is cook a little bit on a pan, taste it, and then add more salt, pepper, whatever you want into the mixture. Okay, so I am going to try both wrappers because I wanna see how they work. And then if whatever we don't use, I'm just gonna save and uh, hopefully be able to use to make something else, but let's just see. So these are very thin as compared to the other ones. All right, so I'm going to test this. I'm gonna take one. So the way that my family makes it, so we take um, some filling. So I'm using the little wrappers, so I don't know how much I'm gonna need right now, but I'm going to figure it out. So this is about a tablespoon. It's like, okay. I'm using a tablespoon and a half here. Basically, you roll it. Maybe I'll bring you closer. Okay, so I'm rolling it over, then I'm gonna tuck it in, kind of like this, just to make sure it's tight, because you want it to be nice and tight. All right, once it is tucked, I'm going to roll it. Make sure the filling stays inside. Roll it like so, just make sure it's nice and tight. And then, take some water and wet the end. Then you're just going to make sure that the end sticks on it. If it doesn't stick, you can make a glue with cornstarch, but um, I found that I've never had to do that. So it looks like so. And then, sorry, my kitchen shears are dirty. I'm just gonna use my, um, my kitchen scissors, but we just cut it and uh, that's how it looks. second half of the lumpia um, batch I'm going to freeze so I freeze it on a baking sheet first and then I'm going to transfer it to like a resealable bag 
This way, when I freeze them, they don't stick together. And um, you can freeze, I mean you can freeze, you can fry them from frozen, which is great. I'm going to actually give these to one of my friends to taste test. She's not in town right now. So when she comes back to town, I will give her these and she'll let me know what she thinks. All right, the lumpia is done. We tested the other wrapper, it's hot. This is the other wrapper as well. But I liked this wrapper better because like, like the packaging said, it was thinner, so it's definitely crispier. And it's the best wrapper that I've cooked with so far. Um, as you can see, it's like nice and smooth. And then this one turned out a little bubbly. So I just think like aesthetically, this one was the best one. What do you think of your first Lumpia Shanghai experience? Fantastic. I'm in the garage. I'm currently repotting plants because some of these plants that I bought are not happy. So I had this, I got this cutie. I forgot the name of it, but I got this one at, at Trader Joe's. So excited. And uh, look at this craziness. It's like, please help get me out of this pot. So I'm going to repot it. I don't have any nice pots right now and I really want to repot this. And like I mentioned earlier in this video, we're going to be leaving and I don't know how long we're going to be gone. My friend, I'm gonna ask her, at least she doesn't know yet, but I'm gonna text my friend to see if she can take care of my plants. But um, I don't really wanna ask her to repot my plants because I just don't wanna um, put that on her. It's just too much work. She's already gonna come. I'm assuming she's gonna come and water my plants. I also have this one. It's doing all right, but it's starting to brown. It's like crispy, which is weird because the room that it's in it's not a full sunroom, so I don't know why it looks so like burnt, but hopefully that is not the case. <sighs> I'm gonna bring these all inside. I never know what to do with these, I always save them. And I'm probably not gonna use it again, but I feel bad throwing it away. So I have a shelf over there just with a bunch of these on it. Chris, I don't know if he's vlogging right now. Maybe he is, but he had to go pick up a package um, that got lost with UPS. And I actually just tuned into, our family's doing um, prayers for my cousin for nine days. So they just did the prayer right now. So we, I tuned in via Zoom. Now I am going to make dinner. We, like I mentioned earlier, we are going to be heading back to LA for my cousin's services. So I need to clear, clear out the fridge because I really don't know how long we're gonna be gone. A minimum of a week, I think. So my goal tonight is to make something with as many veggies in the fridge as possible. So we got lots of carrots. Here, let me pull everything out and then I'll show you. This is what I'm starting with. I don't know, I have to go through the pantry to see what I can add, but these are what we need to use up. So I have a ton of celery, which this might be a little too much for the soup, so I might end up just juicing some of it tomorrow. Then we have carrots, mushrooms, tomatoes, green onions. And then I also have a ton of potatoes that we need to use up. So I think I'm gonna make some sort of soup. I really want a creamy soup, so I might, I don't know what's on me. I might end up blending it, but we'll see. Also the lumpia, I gotta shoot photos of that. I was snacking on these while we were making them, so like I don't even want any anymore, and I can't really eat that many fried things without feeling sick. So, got a lot left. Um, they smell and look exactly like my childhood and taste like my childhood. I am really happy with how they turned out, and the nori was excellent. I highly recommend you put the nori in it. Let me focus this. The nori is a must. Also, we tried it with the other lumpia. Oh, I, I told you this earlier, did I? I don't know. Okay, before we get into dinner. I am actually going to be doing some plant stuff because my plants have been neglected for the past couple days, almost a week. Uh, <laughs> All right, I have this app called Planta and basically it, I don't know if I've talked about it here on YouTube before, I've talked about it on Instagram a bunch of times, but you log all of your plants in it. Sorry, this is so bright. You log, bear, you log all of your plants in the app, and then your app will give you tasks to do every day, uh, whether it be water, fertilize, mist, or sometimes it even tells me to pick the dead flowers off of certain things, which I it's crazy because it knows. Um, but this has really been helping me keep track of my plants because I used to be the type of person that would try to do it every Saturday and then forget to do it and then a bunch of things died. So 
this one, it'll send me push notifications and I'm like, oh crap, I gotta take care of this. Yeah, I would recommend it if you are a plant person or if you're trying to be a plant person or if you just don't wanna keep track of your plants. I don't know if that made sense, but I'm going to look through my to-do list and I have a, a lot of plants. Um, I currently have 49 plants in this house and I'm planning on probably getting more. Oh. Hi. All right, this plant is looking real sad and crispy and I'm just praying that it's not dead, but we'll see. <laughs> so the app breaks it down um, either by task or, I don't know what the middle one is. Oh, by plant, which I don't, it's gonna be too many things. Or by room. So right now I'm going to be in the living room. Oh, these I just did. So living room, where are you? There you go. So these are all the plants that need care. And um, I don't, if it says water, I don't water right away. I check the plant to see if it actually needs water because sometimes it doesn't. But mist I will definitely do. Oh my God, look how many plants I have. Oh my God. Okay, right now our goal is to clean out the fridge and make a soup with all the vegetables that we have. So currently, I am cooking up some onions. It's red onions, I'd rather use white or yellow, but we don't have any, and then some garlic. And then I'll show you what else I do. We have a whole bunch of veggies. So I just added in some diced up mushrooms. We had some leftover uh, portobello mushrooms and some celery and carrots. Now I'm just gonna saute this up and then we're gonna try to make like a creamy soup out of this. So uh, I have some cashews over here that are soaking. I'm kinda gonna take our broccoli cheddar soup as inspiration and just add some additional veggies and hope for the best. I think it'll come out pretty good. We're also gonna add in some potatoes as well. So we have some soaked cashews here. I'm adding a little bit of lemon juice and then I'm gonna add some water and Ordinarily, I would add nutritional yeast, but we don't have any, so I have this. I'm just gonna add in about a tablespoon or two, uh, and then we're gonna blend it up to make like a cheesy, creamy sauce. We added that creamy cashew thing Chris just blended. I didn't see what he put in it, but some potatoes. We're adding in some frozen broccoli, just because we had it left over in the freezer. Next, we're adding in about four cups of water and then we also have these no chicken bouillon cubes we're just gonna add in the soup is looking great i just added some salt and pepper we brought it to a boil and then set it to a simmer for about 20 to 30 minutes the key is making sure the potatoes are soft we just fogged up a bit there um but i think we're ready to eat the real question is do we have any bread Ooh, we have bread. So I'm not sure if we showed this in a previous vlog, but we redid our living room a little bit. We painted, but you can't really tell. And then we got this, the frame TV from Samsung. It's by Samsung, we purchased it. This is not affiliated with them in any way, but essentially it starts out as like a picture frame and you can just turn the TV on. And we're about to watch a movie or TV or something and eat dinner. Hey Lou, how you doing baby? I was like, what is that noise? Lou, what is it? There's nothing in there. Louie loves this poof. Here, come on up. Very so mad at me. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I love you. I would just be. Is that your little show on the floor, Louie? 
We're gonna watch this show called The Floor is Lava. I think it just came out on Netflix today. It's like a, some sort of game show. I don't know. We'll see how it is. Hey, brothers. It's funny he just puts his ass in his face. <laughs> They're so funny. I know. Look at that. <laughs> he just puts what his butt there. With it's my butt, Ryder. Oh, he's bounced. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of the soup? Really good. What'd you put in it? I put. As everyone saw, I processed some portobello mushrooms with celery and carrots. And I put some red onion and garlic in the pan first to saute. I made like a cashew sauce, mm. potatoes, broccoli. It's really good. Wow. Thanks, boo. Mm -hmm. Look at King Louie in the background. <laughs> Hi, baby. He's fine. I know. We are going to go to bed. The camera's Thank you. a little crooked, sorry. Thank you to everyone who hung out with us today. And uh, we were planning on eating ice cream, but there's no way. Not happening. We're super tired. So we'll see you soon. Peace Bye. Out.